So following on from my introduction to GarageBand for Kids, now's the time to get started on this. Now, on the desktop here, your GarageBand is the guitar symbol here, which might appear on your bottom pane, or it might be elsewhere in your on the desktop. Let's just open that up and then go to plus up here for a new song. Now, at the moment, we're going to use tracks. If it, it comes up with two options, live loops or tracks. Live loops is great fun because it plays stuff and you can just enjoy listening to the samples that are in there. But tracks is where we make a new song from scratch. So under tracks, you've got a sort of choice of instruments, all the sort of famous you know, strings and bass and guitars, a bit of world music. There's drummer, but then there's drums. Now, drummer gets you a beat instantly but we're going to do drums because understanding the fundamentals of playing along with that beat and internalizing rhythm is really important because it it has so much sort of um relevance with other stuff all the guitar parts and the piano parts and the keyboard parts and your vocals if you want to sing along to your tune so let's go to acoustic drums it brings up a familiar looking drum kit set up for a right handed player. A left handed player would have hi hats and snare the other side. It would be a mirror image. But anyway, I'm going to show you basically how to get started with this. Now, these are touch sensitive, so you can play quietly or loudly. Great. And it works quite nicely. So we've got the familiar sounds of bass, snare and the toms and then some cymbals. Notice with the crash cymbal that it plays the bass drum as well. We won't worry about that for the moment. You can switch that off. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and play along with the beat here, and I'm gonna play the intro to Billie Jean that I talked about just now. So it's the most basic drum beat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the physics of this before we record. Right hand or right index finger on the hi-hats. Like that. And the bass drum is played with your index finger and your left hand. And snare is also played with the left hand. So you go between those two drums and you do this. So for every two hi-hats you're playing a drum so it goes together right together right together right together right it sounds good as a beat it's you know it's just a standard drum beat you can make it more complicated afterwards but beware of complexity it can actually make a tune sound not very good at all you know when you consider that this record billy jean was on one of the best selling albums in the world ever and it has a basic drum beat that kind of tells you something so i'm going to go to the spanner symbol at the top right here and i'm going to slow the tempo down a bit a good sort of tempo to start with maybe just try 76 or something that's reasonably slow that means that you can actually record you know do the physics of the drums but it's not so slow that you sort of lose track of what you're doing so we've got the record button at the top here the magic red button which i'm going to press and i'm going to hear four clicks i'm going to hear the metronome doing giving me four beats in now most music is in four time that is to say that for every bar or measure you've got four things happen or four main beats between those main beats you can have other stuff so you can have two things per beat which is what your hi-hat's going to be doing so i'm going to go from the start and i'm going to demonstrate this and then you can have a go as well And then the stop button to stop recording and it'll automatically go back to the beginning for you so now i'm going to close this window down now there's my drum beat you can see it as a sort of um as a graphical sort of representation you can see the the sort of drums in sort of rough terms on that grid there so when i play back
Now, notice that any little timing problems that I had have gone because the first track you put down, which usually would be your drums, is automatically what's known as quantized. And what that means is it's put all the notes into a certain, into their exact places rather than the approximate ones that I put in. It'll only work if you've done the drums, you know, properly. Now I'm going to play, I'm going to record these again, but this time I'm going to record it and I'm not going to listen to the beat at all. So I'm just going to go free and, not, and ignore the metronome and you'll see that it doesn't work very well. So I've completely ignored the metronome there. It's not going to sound very nice. Cousin kind of doesn't really sound like Billie Jean all that much. Still, never mind. Let's undo that and go back to the beginning. And I'm going to play it again <clears throat> so that you can see how the beat works. There we go, there's my drum beat, so that should sound all right now. Now we've got that drum beat that's going with the metronome, you could switch the metronome off. It's this little blue thing here, classic old metronome with this sort of diagonal sort of box with a, a thing that swung backwards and forwards. So I'm just gonna switch that off So one of those snare drums was a bit quiet, but I'm just going to leave that for now because the most important thing is to internalize that rhythm, is to get that drum beat to work along with your main rhythm. Try it a few times and also you could try maybe a couple of snare drums instead of one. You could go or you could do two bass drums. There's all sorts of things that you can do with this with the drum kit here. Now, once you've done that Billy Jean beat, once you've done that, you know, you are basically internalizing your own rhythm. And that means that the other parts are going to be much, much easier.